Say what you will about the consulting industry, there's one thing they're good at, it's building great PowerPoint slides. But it's not just about the design of these slides. When done correctly, they can be effective ways to communicate a lot of complex information in a really simple and easy to digest way. But as a PowerPoint instructor for the consulting industry, I always wonder to myself, could these slides be made even better? For this video, I took three high quality slides from Bain to see if I could redesign them to be more effective. I'll show you why I made the changes that I did for these slides and how you can apply those same tips for your own presentations. Coming up. Hey everyone, Paul here with Analyst Academy, where we provide PowerPoint, presentation design, and data visualization training to individuals and companies all around the world. If that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you check out our courses over at theanalystacademy.com. We've also got a lot of great free stuff over there, so make sure you check that out as well. All right, this first slide is from a presentation all about digital solutions in a post-COVID world. The title says, customers in isolation spend their time very differently. And what it's talking about is what life looked like pre-COVID and what it looks like now. So for example, with outdoor activities, pre-COVID, people would spend this much of their day, and post-COVID, they spend this much, a decrease of 53%. There's lots to like about this slide. One of them, this short title, straight to the point. It's good to put a descriptive title on your slide, but sometimes people get carried away with this and put more than they need to. I could add a lot of words here to make this seem more descriptive, when in reality, this is the only message they're trying to communicate. So short and to the point, I really like it. It's also good that the content clearly supports the title. So you can see it in this chart down here and especially in these percentages. And then last thing, icons. These are really underrated because they help me understand this just a little bit better. There's a lot of text in this section right here. So making that text come alive just a little bit more with even these just really simple icons is helpful. But there's quite a few things on this slide that just aren't working for me that I think we need to change. The first is the overall layout of the slide. So notice how this section right here tends to be the main focus. And it's almost like this chart down here is secondary. If you really think about it, the most important information on this slide, at least as it relates to the title, are these percentages down here. And yet they're at the very bottom and pretty small. Because what these percentages are showing are how different things really are. And yet it seems like this gets most of the attention. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is switch this around just a little bit. And even by moving this chart up just a little bit, it just commands just slightly more attention. And these descriptions now play more of a supporting role. The other thing that kind of bothers me about this slide is their use of color. Color actually plays a really important role on your slide and you wanna use it intentionally. Here it seems like they're going from this kind of darker grayish black over to this blue color. And they do the same thing with these descriptions right here. And you may or may not have noticed, but what it's trying to communicate with that color is that the activities on this end of the spectrum are things we're doing a lot less. And on this end of the spectrum, we're doing it a lot more. So there's this kind of gradient from these more boring colors to these blue colors. That's all fine and good, but I don't really like the ordering of this color. Dark, less dark, less dark, lighter, dark, less dark, lighter. It's almost like there's a reset right here that corresponds with this division right here, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But the much, much bigger problem, and really the biggest problem with this whole slide, is this chart right here. It's a 100% stacked bar chart, and what it's trying to do is help us see the difference before and after COVID in each of these activities. So outdoor activities is this section right here. What we're doing is we're comparing the length of this versus the length of this. And this difference right here is this number. The problem with these 100% stacked bar charts is it's hard to compare the categories against each other except the ones that are on the very end. So a much better choice here would be a clustered bar or a clustered column chart. So that's the next change that I made. And notice I also took care of the colors. So now look how easy it is to compare these against each other. One is clearly shorter or clearly longer than the other, even the ones that are really close. It's easy to compare the lengths of these different columns and that's gonna emphasize the point just a little bit better. So now we just need to clean up the rest of the slide a little bit better and try and emphasize this message a little bit more clearly. So the first thing is to just make these all the same color and remove the unnecessary boxes. So now notice how these descriptions and these icons, they're playing much more of a supporting role. They're not trying to be the main character. It almost kind of pulls all of this together 
into one visual. But then now we got to focus on this section right here, because like I said in the beginning, this is really what we're trying to focus on, these numbers down here. And right now, it's just not very clear. So the next thing I wanted to do was to use a color that helps inform the size of each of these numbers. So instead, I put these in oval, and then use colors that correspond to the difference. So the positive values are all in green, and the darker the positive value, the higher the number. And then the negative values, we could have used red here, but we've already got red in these columns, so instead I use these gray colors. And again, there's a gradient. Big change to slightly less big change. In reality, there's a lot of different ways we could have done this. We definitely could have used arrows right here if we really wanted to, putting negative arrows on this side. We could have put these numbers right on top of the columns here, but I think this method actually works pretty good. So notice how much of a difference this makes when you compare it with the original slide. The chart makes the message much more clear and putting more emphasis on these percentages down here helps drive that message home as well. So in the last couple of videos I did like this, a lot of people were asking how I built these slides. In other words, they wanted me to show them the step-by-step -step so they can do the exact same things that I did. So here's a time-lapse of that video. And while you're watching that video, let me tell you about a tool that I like to use called Ampler. Ampler is basically a PowerPoint add-in that supercharges your productivity. A lot of big name consulting firms use it and it's something that I personally use and recommend. In fact, I use it to build each of these slides. You can probably see me using it in the video right here. My favorite feature by far is the chart builder. It's kind of like other chart builders you might've heard of, but it's a lot less expensive, very feature rich and incredibly easy to use. The really great thing about Ampler though is it's really useful for teams. You can share branding and design tools, templates, so you have a consistent look and feel across all of your presentations. We've actually partnered with Ampler, so anyone who enrolls in our advanced courses gets a free six month subscription. But if you're not enrolled in one of our advanced courses and you still wanna try it out, I'll include a link down below where you can try it out for free for a month. There's no credit card required and it's pretty easy to sign up. All right, this next slide is from a presentation about supply chain trends. And it's showing the survey responses to the question, what changes are you making to your supply chain network? Now, this isn't how I would have designed this slide, but there are a few things about this slide that I like. Notice how even though it's a survey question, and really you're just responding, you're just showing the results to one question, they didn't put this in the title. It's a common mistake to use your survey question and make that the title, and then have the results in the body of the slide. But the problem is when you do this, you're not really making it easy for your audience to pick out the key insights. But what they've done here is they've put the key insight right here in the title. And that's exactly what you're supposed to do. Then just put the question just below that. The next thing I like is they've really put some life to the survey results here by adding these icons, making this text nice and bold. It's really easy to see. And then also related to that, making these numbers nice and big. In fact, when I looked at this slide for the first time, this, this is the very first thing that I noticed was these numbers. But there are quite a few simple changes we can make to improve this slide that's going to make it a whole lot more effective. The first is this picture. Now, pictures are not inherently bad. You can have pictures on your slide. But when they distract more than they contribute, they have to go. In this case, obviously, the picture is related to supply chains. But how much value is it really adding to this slide? Not that much. So then the first thing was to delete this. And obviously, we have to change this text to black. I also made this just a little bit smaller because you want the title to be the main show here. Because like I said, that's the key message of the slide. So you want people to focus on that, not necessarily on the question. It's important to have the question there or else this data is kind of meaningless, but it's not the main point of the slide. Now, you may or may not have noticed, but this is actually a column chart right here. I could be crazy, but I don't think that's immediately obvious. It is now maybe that the picture is gone, but before the picture was gone, I don't know. To me, it's not super clear that this is a column chart and they're using a column chart to show the results of this data. Obviously the numbers are very clear, like I said earlier, but the fact that this is a column chart, to me is not as obvious as it should be. Now the choice of a column chart is actually a good one here because in a regular column chart, just like in a bar chart, you can compare these values really easily against each other. And that's good for a survey because you can see which one of these is number two, number three, and it's supported by the actual visual of the chart. But like I said, this one isn't obvious. So in my opinion, you need to change this either to a bar chart or you need to remove it from the edges of the slide here to make it more obvious. So that was the next step. Now, this might look pretty simple, but remember, simple is not bad. Your main goal is to communicate your message effectively. 
And if that requires a simple slide, it's completely fine. Now, the last thing we want to do is put slightly more emphasis on these two. That's why in the original chart, these icons were red. And actually the colors on the columns themselves, there was a little bit of red. So we want to emphasize that in our bar chart here, because that's really what they're trying to communicate with the title. Many retailers are pushing fulfillment closer to consumers. That's about these two right here. So a really easy way to do this is to de-emphasize these bottom bars, which is going to emphasize these. I also added some bolding to these to make them a little clearer and easier to read. And the result is a pretty straightforward and in my opinion, really easy to understand slide. You can still see the survey question, but now the results put much more of an emphasis on the message you're trying to communicate. Slides aren't just about showing data. You can communicate data in an email. Slides are about visually representing the message you're trying to emphasize. And this is actually a really good example of that. You're showing the data, but you're putting an emphasis on what you want them to take away from that data. And this version, in my opinion, does that a lot more effectively. Yeah. All right, this last slide is from an article about consumer businesses in Asia Pacific. And this slide in particular is about overseas versus domestic growth for companies headquartered in China, companies headquartered in Japan, and companies headquartered elsewhere. But this is all based on the top 50 companies in APAC. Now, what I like about this slide is really just the overall clean professional look. Bain actually does this really well for the articles on their website, but also for their client presentations. It's nice and clean. There's not too many colors here. It's very straightforward. The red emphasizes what they want you to look at first. There's a good use of bolding. And the other really good thing is their font hierarchy. And what I mean by that is the most important text on the slide is also the largest, and it kind of goes down from there. So this is a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, I guess this, small, smallest. And also, generally speaking, the important stuff is bold, and then this stuff is not bold. And that's a really subtle thing, but it actually impacts how I'm viewing the slide. It directs me to what's important and directs me away from the stuff that's not as important. Then the last thing that I really like here is, notice how in these charts, they're all scaled to the same size. So there's a lot of empty space right here. They could have made this chart bigger, changed this axis, but instead they kept these all at the same level. That way we can compare them across each other, which is a subtle thing, but it makes a big difference when you're not trying to misrepresent the data. My main issue with this slide is actually the title, which is something you really don't want to get wrong in your slides. Are you saying China-based companies grew the fastest overseas, full stop? Or are you saying for overseas growth, China-based companies did the best? To me, it's that one. In other words, I think they're trying to say 17% is greater than six and five. But again, it's not very clear. The other thing is this second half, which to me is also unclear. So it's saying while Japan-based consumer product companies use the offshore business to drive top line growth. And they use the word offshore, which is really the same as overseas. I don't know why they use two different words, but they're trying to say that this was pretty high and it kind of offset this. So overall a confusing title. That's the first change that I made was to adjust this. So now it says overseas revenue for China-based companies grew faster, so this versus this and this, than overseas revenue from other APAC companies. Separating it because these are two separate ideas. Japan-based consumer products companies used overseas growth, same word, so it's not confusing, to offset domestic losses. I still think there's too much going on in this title, but at least it's a little bit more clear. All right, so the next thing to look at is their choice of chart. What they used are stacked column charts, which usually is good for showing the overall value of each of these years. And secondarily, you can see the breakdown in values. But it's hard for me to compare this versus this versus this because they're all sitting on top of these gray columns. So instead, what I'm gonna do is put them all in a line chart. Now, line charts tend to be good when you're trying to show change over time. And it works here because what we're showing is the overseas revenue for these China-based companies grew at a faster rate than for these other companies. So the companies based in Japan and the companies headquartered elsewhere in Asia Pacific. And you can see that mentioned in the title, grew faster than overseas revenue from other APAC companies. And you can see that pretty well here with this line chart. 
We made China red, so it pops just a little bit more. And it's clearly growing at a faster rate than Japan and certainly more than the companies that are based elsewhere. But I think we can make this message even more clear. Right now, this chart is focused on revenue, an absolute number, which is why we have this y-axis right here. But instead, what we want to focus on is the change in growth. And I did that by creating what's called an index chart. In other words, I took the revenue of all these companies, put it at 100. That way you could see the change in growth for each of these different segments. So this y-axis right here represents the percentage of that segment's 2012 revenue right here. Now, instead of comparing the absolute revenue between each of these segments, now we can compare the growth changes and look at this big difference right here. This is the message we're trying to emphasize. China-based companies grew faster, and it's very clear with this chart. Believe it or not, creating an index chart is actually really simple. For each segment, all I did was take the revenue for that year, divide it by the original year, and multiply it by 100. So for this first column, 16 divided by 16, multiplied by 100, and then I just copied that over to the other columns and copied it down for the different rows. Then take those values, paste them in the original place, and I did that with a shortcut Alt-ESV, and now we have our index chart. All right, the final issue is this section right here. In my opinion, we should actually just cut this off. I don't think it's that insightful. I would rather just have a slide that focuses on this, uh, this first part of the message. But if you wanted to include them both on the same slide, all, we, all you would have to do is just bring back that original chart, put it right here. That way you have this side of the slide that focuses on this, and then this side of the slide that focuses on this. What I would rather do is just have one slide per message. So this message clearly represented with this chart, and then this message clearly represented with this chart. Compare these to the original slide and the messages come through a lot more clearly. They're a lot easier to understand. All right, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you found it helpful. If you're interested in learning more about how to build better presentations, make sure you check out our advanced courses over at theanalystacademy.com. We've also got a lot of great stuff over there that a lot of people don't know about, including articles, videos, and other downloads. So make sure you check that out as well. If you're interested in getting a one-month subscription of Ampler, you can find that in the description below. Thanks again for watching.